Hello, I am Michael Loche. I'm the author of the book Law of Attraction. It sold 1.9 million copies in 33 languages, so it's very exciting. What comes with that is a lot of people wanting to be able to teach it. So I have a certified Law of Attraction facilitator program. There's for people that want to do seminars in it. But my hunch is there's other people like you that want to know the easy way to teach Law of Attraction. In other words, you don't might not want to be doing seminars, but you might want to bring it to the workplace and thinking, I want to bring this Law of Attraction to my sales team or my workplace. Or you maybe want to bring it to your family or introduce it to your school. So this is a six-part audio series teaching you how the easy way to teach Law of Attraction based on my book. So real shortly, my book is the how-to book. It's all the steps and the things you need to say and do and know to apply Law of Attraction. I'll teach you how to introduce the subject to maybe people that don't know about it. What words do I use? What examples do I give? So if you want to bring this to your work team and have a Law of Attraction centered workplace or an environment that adopts the culture of Law of Attraction and you want to be the leader and bring the subject, then this six part audio series would be ideal for you to learn how to teach Law of Attraction the Michael Loge how to way. So today is, I'm giving away for free the very first part of the six part. My hunch is you'll be uh, stimulated to say, wow, this is making sense. So when you say that, know the people that you're going to teach are going to say that too. For those of you that want to purchase the entire six part series, you can go below this link here below the video in the description field. We'll put the link where you can learn more about that. But for now, enjoy the next uh, part of this audio, which is going to be part one on an easy way to teach law of attraction. One thing that I have always taught for some of you, I know you've been in some of my classes for probably five, ten years, maybe longer, I'm not sure, or it can't be ten years, about six years. And one thing that I was always a real big advocate is that you can only teach what you know. So my goal over the next, uh, or during this series, is to put you in a position that you're going to be have all the tools necessary, all the script know uh, and understand about how to give presentations on Law of Attraction and how to teach it so people get it and how to teach it so people learn and how to engage the audience so you can have a rich, full life teaching the Law of Attraction. So would that be okay if we covered that in the next series? Mm-hmm. Yes. Does that sound like what people are coming here for? You want to learn how to be a good presenter of the material and learn how to teach it? Yes. That's what I want. Okay. Does anybody want to add anything on to that that we could uh, add to the agenda as well? So what I'm actually going to be doing you is teaching Law of Attraction, but as I'm teaching it, I'm going to be teaching you how I'm teaching it. You might get screwed up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? As I do something, I might ask you what it is that I just did. You'll wonder why I'm asking, but you'll know later on. It's like, what, didn't he hear it? He just did it. <laughs> but all of these techniques are really, really important. So, you know, my name's Michael Loge. I know that you know that. I'm a Law of Attraction trainer, and I'm a coach, and I'm an author. Now, there's a word in there that I'm not using that most people would use, a trainer, a coach, or an author. Given this even subject, what would be another word that I could use in that title that most people would use? Expert. Expert, I could say that. The word that I was looking for is that I'm a seminar leader. Hmm. You notice I'm not using that word? Yes. I'd recommend you use the word trainer. Does something get installed in your head when someone knows that you're a trainer? If so, what is it? Who wants to say something? Who that, that, make, that makes you an expert. Okay, it makes me an expert. I'm but a trainer. What else do you hear? A teacher. It, Teacher, okay. If you knew this was a training session, what? Train the teachers. Yeah, I'm going to train the teacher. It's a training session. So what does that mean when people hear that you're a trainer or that? They're going to learn something. They're going to learn something. It's not just a lecture. And I'm supposed to do the work. That's right. There's going to be some work. We're going to do some work. We're going to get some training. You're going to get tools and techniques. Tools and techniques. It's going to be measurable. Now, can you hear the difference between a presenter and a trainer? Mm. Yes. Which one has yes. more money beside it? <laughs> <laughs> so, you're a trainer. Would that be okay to call yourself a trainer? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So, when does a when does a trainer become a trainer? When, when they, they have a body, body yeah. of knowledge to teach on. Yeah, when you when you can teach what you know. So, 
what I'm going to be giving you is everything that I've been using for the last, you know, probably three years since my book came out. You know, somebody recently asked me, does your book still have legs? My book has big legs. I'll tell you, you know, you know how sometimes an artist comes out with a record and it's on the charts and then it dies away? Well, my, my book has been playing about every 10 minutes. About every 10 minutes somebody's buying my book or reading the book or doing exercise from the book. And it's getting uh, bigger and bigger sales all the time. So that's good stuff. Anyway, in short, over the last 18 months, since last January actually, I've conducted 121 seminars. Two of them had over 1,200 people in the audience. One of them, I made more money at one seminar than I did a whole year when I worked for the government. That was a three-hour seminar. Uh, I've also done about 200 hours of talk show radio interviews, uh, probably about 25 television shows like breakfast televisions and, and you know noon at news kind of shows, and about three hours, 300 hours of teleclasses. So I am an expert, and I've got lots, lots to share with you. Even from the little tiny thing about calling yourself a trainer instead of presenter, now you might, uh, you might hear something and say, ah, that's okay. Well, if it feels good, do it. If it doesn't, don't. But I'm going to be giving you everything about how do you explain what law of attraction is when somebody in the media asks you, or, or what do you tell somebody that's really Christian and comes up to you and has a comment about that? In other words, how is it that I know how to teach it? Anybody? How is it that I know how to teach it? Because you live it. Because I live it, and I've experienced it, right? You can teach what you know. Write that down somewhere. I can teach what I know. That's why taking the training at the Law of Attraction Training Center is important. You need to know it really well. You can't go to a seminar or coach somebody and be asked a question and not really know how to answer it. I guess you could. You could tell them you're going to get an answer later, tomorrow. <laughs> That'd be good for your integrity. <laughs> but are you all getting my point that it's really important to get full training to make sure that you can articulate and you can talk about it and uh, even start a little Law of Attraction group in your house? You know, that's how Linda Story and I started in Victoria. Her and I met every second Sunday in an office that had four chairs. When we stopped doing it, we had 31 people come in the office with four chairs. <laughs> but, you know, and what happens when you host one of these Law of Attraction discussion group meetings uh, every uh, second week for a year? What happens? What are a couple things? get to know just about every way of responding to everything. That's right. You get to know every way there is to respond. There isn't a question you haven't been asked a thousand times. So that, that helps you become a what? An expert. An expert. And because the meetings were in Linda's and I, Linda and my office, I kind of took the lead when people came in. I welcomed them and got them to settle down and sit down. And, you know, I kind of chaired the meeting. So that made me look as, how did that have me appear? As a leader. Very yeah, leader. as a leader, oh, he's, he knows the most. Now, I didn't know more than Linda Story did, but I was the one that was, I had the biggest voice. So everybody looked up at me, and before I know it, what are some things that happened as a result of hosting these meetings that had, had everywhere from five people to 40 people in them? What, 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 what's the value for you to do that? Getting requests for appear, other appearances. That's right. People would say, hey, would you come to talk to my group? Well, you know this really well. What else might, so I might get an invitation to go talk somewhere. What else might you get? Clients. Oh, you bet you'll get clients. Why? Because you know the most out of the whole room. So I started getting one-on-one -on -one clients. It's really how I started to build my business because I was working full-time for the government, doing this on Sundays, loving it. And after a while, people would look at Linda's story and I'd say, what are you two doing? <laughs> they could just tell everything was different. Everything was different for us. Michael, you didn't charge for your presentations for a while, did you? I don't think I did, not for the weekly meetings, but when I stopped having the weekly meetings, then I start doing eight-week groups because I noticed there was a pattern. Just like on my books, you see how there's a pattern? You need to know what a vibration is before you can allow. I mean, there's a, there's, that's why law of attraction is so exciting. That it's a process, and it's really easy to teach. So then I put eight-week groups together, and I met people for eight weeks. The only challenge with doing that is I had to find a place to rent for eight weeks in a row. So it didn't make lots of money, but what was the value for me to do it? Experience. Experience. Mine. I actually, was, I, my notes, my seminar that I designed was actually shrunken into my book. My book is the way I taught it. 
well, let's see, I need to teach them about vibrations, and then I need to teach them this. Because when you do the live seminar, you can't teach the end result until you teach the step two and three. So my book came about as my seminars that I was doing in my teleclasses. My intention wasn't to be an author. My intention was to be in front of the room. Being an author is my strategy to make that happen. I hardly write my articles on the on my easy. Somebody somebody writes me a question. I say, oh, that's going to be a good article, and then I'll call my my uh, article writer Marlene, and I'll go, Marlene, here's my article, blah 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 blah, blah. and I'll talk for ten minutes, and I can hear her pecking in the background, going, just typing it all out, and then ten minutes later, she sends me an article. She goes, here's your article. I wrote a book, and I'm not even a writer. I hardly even read books. But what I am good at doing is teaching. Okay, enough about me. My friends would laugh if they could hear me say that. Because <laughs> somehow it always comes around about me. But here's one question. Uh, how many people have been to a live seminar that I've done before? Anybody? Yes, I, I have. I okay, have. what's your first name? <laughs> Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. So, Cheryl, what do you remember about my style and about well, how you retained information? What do you remember most? Well, I have been to two of them. Okay. Um, and what I remember the most is it was so easy to understand, and I hadn't been introduced to Law of Attraction prior to going to your seminar, and when I left the first one, I was just blown away at how easy it sounded um, and, and how easy it seemed to implement to start out. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. No, it's wonderful. You are fabulous. Yeah, oh, I'm fabulous. I know I am. <laughs> I'm a little modest, too, I know sometimes. But the truth is, uh, what people when people say, wow, this is so easy, you know, well, that's a compliment. It took me two years to make it easy, at least in the in my book. Okay, who else has saw me live, and what, what do you remember most about the style and handouts or whatever? Who has a comment? Kathy. Kathy, Kathy and go ahead. I am, um, the fill in the blanks, which really engaged the audience. We had to participate, so we were really involved in it. Nobody was doing a grocery list, were they? Absolutely not. And one more person? This is Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Hi. Um, the repetition and making sure that the audience got what you had been speaking about before you moved on to another part of your presentation. Do I repeat myself? <laughs> yeah. Do I repeat myself? <laughs> So would you say that um, you retained some of the information that you learned in the seminar? Exactly, for that reason. Yeah, very good. Well, that's what I'm going to be teaching you folks how to do. It. How, do you, how do you teach this metaphysical woo-woo subject, as some people might put that, how do you teach it in such a way that the masses will get it? Simply. Yeah, as simple as possible. Now, does everybody here have a copy of my book? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Ideally, you would. I'd have a copy of yours if you had one about Law of Attraction. I have ten of them, Michael, in my closet right now, just uh, in case great. somebody should like one. <laughs> in that case, I'd like one. Oh, I'm looking at them right now. Uh, why did I want to tell you that? Um, okay, that'll come back to me. Okay, before we get started, I want to have you start a brand new piece of paper, and at the very top, I want you to write uh, these, these four words right beside each other. Uh, interesting, comma, engaging, and effective trainer. Interesting, engaging, effective trainer. Would it be okay if you learned almost everything there is to know to help you become an in interesting, engaging, effective trainer? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Fabulous. That's what my job is. So I've got two things. Remember, I'm going to teach you uh, my way of teaching law of attraction. And part of, for those of you that don't know any other things about me other than my involvement here, I'm also an NLP practitioner, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's a really big field of study, but I was particularly interested in linguistics, the word part of everything. Mostly because law of attraction is all about the vibrations we use, which comes from we send, which comes from the words we use. So, understanding words is really important. So, um, and how people process information. You know, what turns them on? What turns them off? What what motivates them? So, I'm going to be using lots of techniques that I learned in NLP and implement them during the training, so everybody gets it. Some students just like to write. Some 
listen, some like to see, some like to speak, some like to just li um, close their eyes and imagine. But we're going to use techniques to help engage all of that. So you're going to become interesting, engaging, effective trainers. Now, I want you to draw a line down the middle of the page. And on the top of the left-hand column, write traditional lecture. And on the top of the right-hand column, write accelerate it. That's E-X, accelerate it, learning techniques. So we're going to do a quick little li list building here. Tell me some of the things that a traditional lecture would would in, would use or entail. And what do we what do you remember seeing them doing or saying or their style? What's what's common? They're talking. Now, they say that again. They're talking mostly. Okay, mostly talking. So traditional lecture is mostly talking. What else? One way. W one way. Yeah. What does that oh, communication mean? with the audience. Oh yes, very good. One way, one way conversation. No communication with the audience. They mean the same thing, but they're important, so I want to put them both. No communication with the audience. What else? Boring. It's boring. What about <laughs> handouts? Yeah, they could have handouts. Yeah, and what would, would the handouts be all noted and filled out? Yeah. Okay, let's put filled in. Do you know what I mean by filled in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, filled in handouts. Who's reading those? And what else? If it was a fancy dancy seminar, they would have what? Overhead. 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 PowerPoint. 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 When is this presentation going to be over? <laughs> okay, that's traditional uh, lecture style. We've all been to those before. We could build another list about why they're not effective. You know, they don't keep people's attention span. They're boring. Let's add that. Let's add. Um, let's add. They don't keep people's attention span. Yes, yeah, they don't keep their only only the um, auditory people would really get that. And there's four different learning styles. So we're going to use accelerated learning techniques, and we're using one right now. What do you think the one we're using right now is? Audience, audience participation. participation. Okay, audience participation. Now, if I'm in a seminar, I'd raise my hand and I'd hold it up there. So audience participation by asking. So put that down. We're building a list under accelerated. Audience participation by asking. And then put in person, raise hand, and hold it up there. See, in a live seminar, people need to know how to answer the question you just asked. Seminar leaders would say, so who's got, a, who's got a thought? And people don't know, am I supposed to scream it out? I mean, what do I do? <laughs> so you raise your hand, you hold, you hold it in the air, and now you're saying, follow the leader. Here's how to answer that last question. Mm -hmm. And you just hold your hand up there. That gets audience participation. Now, most of these accelerated learning techniques will help you, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, <laughs> Break state. I want you to write this down. Break, B-R-E-A-K, state, S-T-A-T. Who wants to give me their definition of what that means to break state? Change the mood. This Change event. The mood. Change the mood. Yes. Anything else? Change Keep the mood. Keep people interested. Keep pulling, you know, so what kind of state, some, what kind of state might some people be in? They may be falling asleep or yeah, bored. Falling or asleep. Or, okay, boo, I need to break the state here. So state breakers means we need to do something to break your state. So does raising your hand, um, well, first, does asking a question where you have to give the answer out loud, does that break the state you were in? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And then when I get people to raise their hand, does that break the state that they're in? Yes. yes. I'd like you to write this down, break state. Writing things down. <laughs> Other accelerated learning technique. Writing things down. Now, for those of you that have been in my seminars, it's about a 10-page booklet. You know, I have other trainers that look at me and say, I cannot believe that you give out handouts. What a waste of money. I mean, they have different comments about why I would do that. Well, first, my number one job is to teach. And in order to teach, I need to get people to write stuff down. In other words, it's just a lecture. 
But as you're going from one blank to the other, to one section to the other, what's the likelihood that you'll stay on track with the class? High. Very high. high. And if you get behind because you had to go pee, what do you do when you get back? You fall back in. Yeah, where was I? Well, let me see your notes. In other words, now I've taught probably to 10,000 people. I have only ever can remember seeing two people in my audience that when I said write this down, <laughs> they were not buying into that little story, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> One of them was a teenager, and I remember it very well. He was in Edmonton. He did not want to be there. And his dad has been to every seminar. I knew his dad, and he came and goes, I brought my son. And I said, well, just sit right up front. And his son folded his arms, and he was in front of me for like an hour and a half, right in front of me. And I thought, isn't this interesting? So I tried not to focus on him, but <laughs> my point was, he. when I said write this down, he just had that, go, you know what, yourself. I'm not writing nothing down. <laughs> And then it was another person. So, But most people will do as we're told. Is that true? Yes. Yes. What do you think about filling in the filling in the what? Blanks. Blanks. Because when you fill in the blanks, it, it keeps you alert and keeps you paying uh, attention. Attention. <laughs> okay, so write that down, filling in the blanks. Now, for those, now there's a couple of people. There was Cheryl that was at a seminar, Kathy, Peggy, anybody else? Okay. One of the things that I do in my seminar, and we're going to learn how to do it here, is that I'll say, okay, let's stop what we're doing. We're going to do, I need to test myself. I need to see if I'm doing a good job. So I'm going to repeat everything back that you heard me say so far, but you're going to fill in the blanks. Now, this isn't the first time that they're used to filling in the blanks, Right. In other words, really early in the program, you need to apply all of these learning techniques. You can't wait to the end and expect to get the response. So I'll say, at every moment, there are how many kinds of vibrations? And I'll hold my hands up in the air like I'm Jesus, right? Hold my, how many vibrations are there? They'll say what? Two. 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 And what are they? They go negative and positive. I go through about 15 paragraphs where they fill in the blanks. And when I'm done that, what do you think happens to their self-esteem? Up. Goes up. Sky rockets. So you <laughs> learned that in the last half hour. <laughs> and why? Because they used accelerating, accelerated learning techniques. I tell you, this is the best career in the whole world. <laughs> People come happy, except the teenager in Edmonton, and they leave happier. <laughs> I bet you that kid comes back next year with his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Now, uh, that, this particular piece of paper, I'm going to be giving you things throughout the training program. If I give it to you all now, it's not as effective as practicing. Is that true, yes or no? Yes. Are you finding that you're needing to pay attention, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. to me, yes or no? Was that? No. Uh, that was a joke. I said, are you scared of me? Is that why? Oh, I missed it. You get cut out. Right. So you see what happens here is that I've set it up early in the game. This is a high participation class. Okay, very good. Okay, I want you to take a blank piece of paper. If you were having, if you were doing a live seminar, you'd have the handouts that look like this. At the very top, you need to introduce the subject of law of attraction. Like, what is it? So here's a definition. There's many. Here's mine. Um, I attract to my life whatever I give, my attention, energy, and focus to. And in my seminar, I like to stop there and, and get us to look at it and say, wow, that's a good deal, isn't it? I attract to my life, and I only need to give it attention, energy, and focus, and I'll say, yes, but I'm not done the sentence. <laughs> Here's the rest of the sentence, whether negative or positive. So everybody at my seminar has written that down. I've said it a couple times, and I really want to bring emphasis. So I'm going to say, I want you to double underline the word negative. Because now people don't, don't, because when you say this, people don't understand that why they'd attract something negative. So we want to capture that before they can make a comment on it. You're going to learn why you attract negative things. Okay, just draw a line underneath that. We're going to come back to this definition, and over the next 20 minutes, you're going to learn how to, answer, how to say this and know how to teach it as well. And you're going to find out, of course, about negative vibration. Okay, now, 
there's another um, method that I use during my teaching, and I want you to write this on a blank piece of paper or even a recipe card. We're only going to need that much space. Okay, I want you to write this. Uh, make a point. Put new point. Make a new point. Tell a relevant, um, tell a, a relevant story. <laughs> That's my French tongue. Tell a relevant story. Repeat the point. And number four, take notes. That'll make sense later. And beside tell a relevant story, put gets buy-in. Get by, it gets by in, B-U-I hyphen I-N. So come down, halfway down that page and write buy in. We just want to kind of, what do I mean by buy in? What's buy in mean? They buy into what you're talking about. Okay, so what does that mean? What's another word? They buy into they, the conference? They, they understand you. Okay, they, under, they understand with agreement. And it's got to be credible. It's got to be credible. You've got to understand with agreement. So if I get you to buy in, and I'm using that word respectfully, what's the chances of us moving on to the next phase? Very good. They're good. Very good. 100%. If I don't get your buy-in, you know, if I'm trying to explain law of attraction, how it works, and I tick you off or break rapport with you, I mean, it's really difficult to carry on the conversation, isn't it? <laughs> how long does it take to build broken rapport? Forever. Forever. So if you and I are trying to work together and I'm trying to teach you law of attraction or trying to teach a seminar and I don't get buy-in from the opening sentence, I'm going to have everybody with their heels in the sand. So I need to get buy-in. And the best way to get buy-in, write this underneath there, the best way to get buy-in is give an example for the lowest common denominator. I'll tell you what that means, for the lowest common denominator. In other words, you need to give an example that everybody in the audience, not just rich people or not just mothers or not just fathers or not just plumbers, but that everybody gets to. So give an example. So you're going to hear me do this right now. now the, I'm going to spend, like, what time is it, 3.30? I'm going to spend the next half hour just on your, your first 10 minutes of your whole presentation. You know that's a really important part, right, the first 10 minutes? And in other words, we need to, I'm going to teach you how to pace yourself so instead of going into metaphysics and all that stuff where you could drop people off and lose them and get more um, skepticism, we want to open up with something where they buy in and buy in and buy in and buy in. Everybody with me so far? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what is law of attraction? Write that down on your pad. Well, what is law of attraction? Well, the, the, the simplest way to explain it is it's all about vibes. Okay, some feedback about why I'm using the word vibes. Common denominator. Common denominator. Not everybody's well, using, using the word vibration. So if I use the word vibe, do I stay in the rapport with most people? Yes. Yes. So let's go back to the model. I made the point is about vibes. I need to tell a relevant story to get their buy-in, and then I'll just repeat the point, and then take notes. Take notes might mean give them a piece of homework or something. So it's all about vibes. Now I need to tell, them, I need to tell a story that they can relate to. And I'll say something like, you know how sometimes when you um, go into a building or a store, you'll say, wow, the vibe's ever bad in here. Or you can tell someone's out giving off a negative vibe. Can you do that? Can you tell that? Yeah. Yes. And then, you know what's after the yes in brackets? What two words? Buy-in. Buy-in. So let's try that again. Well, it's all about vibes. You know how sometimes you, you go into a room and you can say, wow, the vibes are really good in here. Or you meet somebody and you say, wow, are they ever giving off a negative vibe? Can, do most people have that experience, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So you, can you hear how I'm pacing you now? When I gave the example, by the way, I, I balanced it. So go back up to your make a point, tell a relevant story, get buy-in and brackets, put balance, 
negative positive examples. So now I told you what vibes are, and now I'm saying a vibe is something that you feel, right? So I'd like you to write this down. A vibe equals a mood or a feeling. A vibe equals a mood or a feeling. See how I'm pacing gradually, you know, one step at a time. Well, it's all about vibes, and a vibe is a mood or a feeling. Now, the word vibe really comes from a longer word. What's that word? Vibration. 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 See how everybody could answer that comfortably? Vibration. Does anybody, maybe not you, but does any, will anybody get an aha moment here? Yes. Wow, I never thought of that. That's what a vibe is. It's a vibration. All that time, I didn't know what they really meant by vibrations. It's kind of a funny word, isn't it? It's a little metaphysical. That's what a vibe is. Okay, that's cool. You see how I'm getting agreement and buy-in? Imagine if I started off talking about vibrations. Are you sensing and feeling the difference of my, my approach here? Mm-hmm. Somebody make a comment about this approach about starting off with vibes and moving up to vibration. I just want to hear that you're getting it. You need to have people understand what you're talking about before you throw something at them that they're unfamiliar with. That's right. So you're going to pace them. Okay? This is called pacing them. Okay, it's all about vibes. Now, law of attraction. Now, here's how. Here's my little gentle introduction to law of attraction, the science part. So, law of attraction is really about vibrational energy. You can write that down. Law of attraction is about vibrational energy. It's about metaphysics or quantum physics. Now, I don't know much about how to explain any of those things, and I never claim to be. <laughs> but this is how I'm kind of associating it with um, um, the scientists. Now, Rebecca spends lots more time because that's, that's her field of interest, right? So for me, it's like, well, it's a vibrational energy. It's about metaphysics. It's about quantum physics. Now, there's something in my example that I want a real keener to pick out. What have you noticed about that example? You added a word, energy. The word energy, metaphysics, energy. quantum physics. You said three things. Ah, oh, good ears. Put a three beside that and circle it. Worth another time where I use three things. You had us write down interesting, engaging, and effective trainer. Good ears. So go beside the title and do what to it? Circle of three. Put a three beside it. And one more time even before that. Attention, energy, and focus. There you go. Attention, energy, and focus. Gave it to you in threes. Now I don't need to I repeat myself. I repeat it three times. Okay. I'd like somebody's feedback about that. What do you... Well, what do you think my reasoning is behind that? Is it a coincidence or is it deliberate? Deliberate. 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 Tell me why. So you can tap into all the audience. That's right. You know, when I talk about attention, energy, and focus, they all mean the same thing. In other words, if I give something my attention, am I giving it my energy? Yes. And if I give it my energy, am I giving it my focus? Yes. If I give it my focus, am I giving it my attention? Yes. <laughs> they all mean the same thing but you'll hear the word that fits best for you. I always give examples in threes as well. In other words, if I can't grab onto one example, I'll grab onto number two or three. Because when you give three things, they hear the one they resonate with the most. Okay, law of attraction, it's all about vibrational energy, metaphysics, quantum physics. And in the vibrational world, I even used that sentence, you might want to write that down. In the vibrational world, there are only two kinds of vibrations. How many? Two. Two. And if you had handouts, you might guess or you might see them, but what do you think the two kinds are? What negative. kinds of vibrations can you have? Negative and negative. Negative and positive. So draw a line down the middle of your page. Put negative vibes. See how I'm going back to the word vibes again? Positive vibes. Does that sound more comfortable than saying negative vibrations and positive vibrations? It sounds a little yeah. formal, doesn't it? You know. So negative vibes. Why am I using the word negative vibes again, quickly? Repetition. Repetition. And? Report. Say that again. 
yet to get rapport with the audience? I'm getting the audience on board, but, you know, negative vibes, that's kind of a cool and groovy word to use, isn't it? So, so, so what's my reason for calling it negative vibes instead of negative vibrations? You're almost there. Oh, you, you reach the, the audience. People. Yes, I want to go to the audience. The, I want the most common database in the audience. Could everybody in the audience have used the word negative vibes before? What do you think? Yes, okay. I, yes. I think so, too. Have they used the words negative vibrations? Mm, not so uh, much. No, not necessarily. So as soon as you say something that they can relate to, now they're, now they're on board. It's like, oh, yeah, negative vibes. Okay, here's my question. Let's build a list of, and we're going to do it in this class, let's build a list of moods or feelings that when you have them, it causes you to put out a negative vibe. Okay, why am I doing this example? They can relate. They can relate. I'm making sure I get buy-in because you know what? The big piece is coming after this. So, so far, even the resistant ones are on board, right? They've heard it. and They know what a vibe is. They know it's a mood or feeling. They've de I've demystified the word vibration. Now I'm going to relate to things that happen to them every day, and they cannot not be on board. You can tell it gets me a little bit excited, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, negative vibes. Let's do it right now, fast. What are some moods or feelings that when you have them, uh, causes you to send off a negative vibe. Anger. Anger. Let's write that down. Anger. Depression. Depression. Frustration. Frustration. Fear. Fear. Now, you know, you notice what's yeah. happening to everybody that's given me an example? Uh, from, uh, from a level of participation, what does that mean? Good. It means are participating. It's like... Wow. And now people are shouting. I mean, nobody, I promise you, nobody's building a grocery list. It's like, oh, is he going to ask me a question? <laughs> or they just keep shouting out answers. Have I created safety on the call to do that? Yeah. 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 And I created, I created in the classroom as well. So positive five. Now, does that list, can most people re re relate to that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Positive vibes. What are some examples? What moods or feelings when you have them get positive vibes? Joy. 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 Passion. Passion. Excitement. Abundance. Abundance. Happiness. Happiness. Gratitude. Appreciation. Uh, Ooh, there's lots of them. Now, everybody knows what you're talking about. Everybody knows what you're talking about right here. Now, just to make my point, because I like to do that, I'm going to just, because my, my big point here is, is that, you know, where I'm where I'm leading up to is that, um, moods, your feelings send a vibration. So before I even jump to that thought, <laughs> I have to make sure they're getting it here. Does that make sense? Yes. You mean our, our, our feelings have a vibration? Really? So I'm, I'm training them. So when I go to tell them, it's not like I'm jumping out of a birthday cake, right? Like they've heard of it a little bit before. So we have negative vibes and positive vibes. Now here's how I like to kind of polish this up, just to make sure they really get it. Every mood or feeling, write this down, every mood or feeling in the dictionary would go in one of these columns. Now, that's not a big aha for them, but it's a cute little tit, it's a little tidbit, isn't it? Now, I'm going to bridge it with this. Now, remember where I'm trying to go. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move into the metaphysical part. So, so every mood or feeling in the dictionary would call here. And here's the next question, next important question. When, capitalize that, when do we have a mood or a feeling? Always. Always. And right now, and right now, and right now, and right now. Right now, you all have a mood or a feeling, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Right now, even if you're not even doing it on purpose, you all have a mood or a feeling. Remember, every time somebody says yes in brackets, what does it say? Buy in. Buy in. Yeah. Yes, yes, every, yes, uh, that's true. Every mood or feeling would, from the dictionary would fit there. Yes, right now we all have a mood or a feeling. And, how many, and, what, and what's the vibration you could be sending then? If, if you have a mood or a feeling at every moment, you're sending a vibration, what vibration could you be sending right now? What kind? Positive or negative. Positive, Positive negative. or negative. And here's where law of attraction comes in. This bridge is really important. <laughs> I want you to write that down. 
And here's where law of attraction comes in. You can reword this as you learn more and learn more from Rebecca and others, but this will this will be a good starting place. Law of attraction is a science. Its job is to match the vibration that it finds. And it, being law of attraction, it, and it is always responding. Boy, I just brought up something new. Ooh, this is something new. What do I need to do now? Example. I need to give you an example. Anything about the st- example and stories that we should be aware of? Common denominator. Common denominator. So I want to make sure it's not about only the pre- people that went to the moon know about. What else? A negative and a positive. You want a negative and a positive. So what did I just say? Okay, in the law of attraction is always checking. When it finds a vibration, it's not. What does that mean? So let me give you an example. It's probably not you. How can I say that? It's kind of cute, but how can I say that? You don't offend anyone. I don't offend anybody, thanks. It's probably not you, but and you can tell by my voice it could be, right? Mm-hmm. It's probably not you. Some, just think of somebody that wakes up first thing in the morning and a little bit cranky. Okay, co- is that a common denominator? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, you bet it is. So you know somebody, not you, that wakes up first thing in the morning a little bit cranky. So they're laying in bed. They're a little bit cranky or irritated. What's the vibration they're saying as sending? Negative or positive? Negative. 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 So that person's laying in bed, sending out a negative vibration, and given what you just learned, what's law of attraction doing as it's finding that negative vibration? Um, Matching it. It's matching matching it. it. So now I'm going to give you a bunch of examples, and these examples will be doing what? Creating buy-in. They're creating buy-in because they are such common denominators. So that person gets up out of bed and they stub their toe. Does that match a negative vibration? And mm-hmm. then they burn their toast, and then they don't run out of coffee, and then they're, they, they lose their keys, and the traffic gets worse, and a bird poops on their car, and it's like, oh, they finally wow. say, I should have stayed in bed. Oh. <laughs> should have stayed in bed. You see how common a denominator that example is? Yeah. Uh-huh. I should have, and then leave a blank. Let them fill it in. Well, they, by the way, you've been training them to fill stuff in. You've been training them to fill stuff in, yeah. right? <laughs> the small words. <laughs> Somebody just repeat back what we just covered. That the law of attraction is a science and its job is to match um, the vibration it finds and it's always responding. Now, here's the teaching point. Now you're coming to understand, now that this sentence is very carefully worded, so I'd like you to write it. Now you're coming to understand why your day got worse and worse and worse. So now you're coming to understand why your day got worse and worse and worse, because law of attraction was checking and matching, checking and matching, checking and matching, checking and matching. You don't have to use those words. You don't have to be animated like me. But it helps with the learning, doesn't it? Is anybody getting an insight that's helping them explain why their day got worse and worse and worse? Does that help to hear that? Yes. Well, that's why it kept getting worse and worse and worse, because law of attraction was checking and finding my negative vibration. And then I was having something negative, then law of attraction was checking. Now, the same thing happens. I'm going to give a positive example now. The same thing that happens for all you business people that maybe you got all excited about this client that you attracted first thing Monday morning. Boy, you were so pumped up about it. You told 10 friends. You called them all up and said, wow, I got the best client ever. So while you were celebrating and bragging about that ideal client, what was the vibration you were sending? Negative or positive? Positive. It was positive. So as you were celebrating and bragging and sending the positive vibration, what was law of attraction doing? Checking. Giving you more. It was checking and matching it, and then what happens a couple hours later? You've got more clients. You get more clients, and listen to this, and then we say, wow, am I ever on a roll? roll. roll. <laughs> See, is that another common denominator? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I just took this, what could be a complicated um, 
issue or complicated piece here and got you to understand it. Now let's just recap how I taught it and got you to understand it. What are some of the rules that I applied? What were some of the rules that I applied in teaching this last piece that is making going to make it easy to learn and easy to understand? Negative and positive examples. I gave negative and positive. So say you never experienced that negative stuff. Well, I, I might catch you on the positive side, right? I'm, I mean, I'm bound to get your attention. So I gave a negative positive example. What else? Common denominator. Common denominator. Everybody knows what burning toast and bird pooping on the car and all that stuff. You know about that. Common denominators. You had them fill in the blanks. And I had you fill in the blanks and had you to participate. And the whole time that I'm doing that, I got buy-in. Why? Because I explained something that's already happening to you. They might not fully believe it, but believing it and buy-in aren't the same thing, are they? Hmm. Buy-in is like permission. I'll keep listening. I think you're a crockpot, but I'll keep listening a little bit longer. <laughs> okay. So, you know what? I think it's time to recap what you learned so far. Why am I doing that? To reinforce. 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 And we just we just went over a big hurdle, right? It's like, ooh. It's like, okay, I've learned a lot. I mean, is it true that I'm asking people to learn a lot of stuff in the first half hour? Yes, yes. But I want to make sure we go right back to scratch. So in my repeating it, now I would do this in a live seminar. It's very, very effective. In my repeating it, I'm going to leave the blanks for you to fill in. If I was in person, what would I do to indicate I want you to fill in a blank? Put your hand up. Hand out sheet. Yeah, raise my hand. And say, fill it in. So we're going to do it right now. And here's something else that I do. I let them know if they participate, they'll retain the information quicker and integrate it quicker. Do you want to hear that sentence? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you were able to integrate this information in such a way that you really, really got it, would you be willing to participate in the next exercise? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. 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 So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to repeat everything you heard me say. I'm going to get you to fill in the blanks. And as you fill in the blanks, notice how quickly the answers came to you. Notice how easily that you're able to remember it, and notice how many of the questions you're going to be able to fill in, and it's only been a half hour. Some of you will learn, have learned and retained more in this half hour than you did at university in a whole semester. Is that possible? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so here's what I'd like you to do. I'm going to get you to fill in all the blanks. I know this really, really, really well, but I want to make sure that I'm teaching it and doing a good job. So I'd like you to fill in the blanks. At every moment, including right... Now. now, right now, and right now, everybody has a mood or a feeling. A mood feeling. or a feeling. We learn that that mood or a feeling actually causes you to send off a what? Vibration. Vibe. 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 Now, the word vibe, of course, it's cute and groovy, but it really comes from the longer word. What word does the word vibe come from? Vibration. 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 And you learn that law of attraction is all about vibrational energy. Now, how many kinds of vibrations are there? Two. 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 And what are they? Positive, 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 positive and negative. And when are you sending a vibration? All the time. Always, oh, all, all, all the, the time. time. And how can you tell what the vibration is that you're sending? You can tell by how you feel. 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 So that means right now you're all sending a vibration, either negative or positive. And as you're sending this vibration, whether deliberate or not, law of attraction is doing two things. The first thing it's doing is checking, and when it finds the vibration that you're sending, then what happens? It matches it. It matches it by giving you more of what? The same. The same. Now, was I correct in yeah. telling you how much you retained in the last half hour? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm now, impressed. Now, here's the now, Whoa. Well, you have to do all of that in about five minutes. Now, some of you, some of you will get asked to go to... Um, like a, 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 a luncheon, you know, networking meeting or go to talk to this chapter or this chapter. You know, I did 121 of them last year. I'm always getting asked. And my first question to them, well, I always have two or three questions. What do you think one question is when somebody asks me to come speak somewhere? How much time do I have? How much time do I have? Thank you very much. It is my very first question. If they say I have 20 minutes and I have to fly to Toronto, I won't do it. If it's 20 minutes in Victoria, I will do it. Or if I'm going to be in a city anyway, like I'm going to Kelowna this weekend, 
and people have asked me to come speak at their place, I'll do it because I'm already there. So how much time do I have is my first question. What would be another question? How many people, how many people are going to be there? How many people are there? Thank you very much. <laughs> now, my fee scale changes all the time. You know, I did a, I just finished a seminar tour. Sometimes the seminars were $49 for three hours. I want more people there paying less amount than more people, less people there that couldn't afford it because it was too much money. And then in Victoria in two weeks, I'm, I'm doing a fundraiser for the Mary Kay Foundation. It's called the Mary Kay Ash Foundation. So I'm doing a fundraiser. They have 300 tickets sold, and I don't make a penny from that. But you'll soon learn how I can make money. Just take a guess how much money I could make doing a free local 300-person presentation. A ton. Tons. Well, what would be a ton? I mean, what would be a good, you know, I live here already. I just need to put my suit on and take a cab and take me there. Go in, speak on a subject I've spoken to on 121 times. I have no notes, by the way. 300 people. And, $1,500. Uh, what's that? Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. I'd say way about more than that. Ten thousand. You can sell all. You, you can, can sell, sell your, books. your books. <laughs> well, yeah. on, on, you know, what, one of the things that I sell on my website is my audio library. So, uh-huh. the library of Law of Attraction audios. It's there's twenty eight hours there, and it's ninety nine dollars. Three hundred people. Well, here's the here's my target audience. They're women entrepreneurs. They oh, look out. Can you say perfect women entrepreneurs? So I bet you I will sell ten thousand, or sorry, I will sell a hundred, a uh, hundred of the memberships. So how much money is that? Ten thousand. Ten thousand, and I'll sell two hundred books at twenty dollars a book. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so when someone wants you to come do a presentation for free, what are the two questions? How much how many time do I have, and how there? many people? How much time do I have, and how many people are going to be there? And of course, I do get paid to do gigs. You know, I was to Cancun last year, 1,200 people. They paid me $10,000 U.S., plus I got to sell stuff at the back of the room. And then I've done seminars where I didn't make any money. <laughs> but I'm going to teach you all the success strategies so you can make money. Okay. So, Michael, yes. um, have you ever used PowerPoint or you don't rec- suggest yeah. that? Or No, I stay away from PowerPoint and computer screens and all of that stuff. For those people that have been in my seminar before, they come in my room, and you know what's at the front of the room? A glass of water. Yeah. They're looking for the screens and the overheads and all that. There is none. And I promise you, I get 100% participation in my seminars when I have a handout with blank spots to fill in. No flip chart, nothing's at the front of the room. I have a book, my CDs, and a glass of water at the front of the room. Michael, this is Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. At the end of one of your um, lectures or your, your talks, <laughs> yeah. how many people leave their uh, notes behind? Yeah, well, that's a good point. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, because as soon as people write their name on their document or fill a couple squares in, what happens to that piece of paper? They own They're going to it. They're going to take it home. They're going to take it home. Now, when I, I did Cancun and I did Puerto Rico, 1,200 people. And Sandy is my assistant, and she always travels with me. And one of her jobs is to go around the room and pick up the handouts. And there isn't any. <laughs> she goes, there isn't any. I said, there you go. 1,200 people brought their handouts with them. Now, have you ever been to a, a presentation where the seminar leader is running around the room picking up all the business cards and brochures and handouts that weren't taken? I've seen it many times. I've done it many times. So how do you get people to take home your, your information? Audience participation. Get audience Fill participation. The get them to fill it in. Put, yeah, you might want to put your name on that. <laughs> My name's on. I'm taking it home. And of course, what's on every page? Blanks to fill in. Blanks. And what's at, what's on the bottom of every page? Your name and your website. Name, website contact. And what's the last page about? What you have your for product. Sale. What you have to product and an order form. No. Ooh, you guys are good. <laughs> they are good. Well, these are the people that have been to my seminar. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to yeah. this class. And here's a little motto that I have. You know, one thing, um, uh, I'm going to do some work with Linda Story, and we were talking, we were doing some doubts about business, and she said one that some people have about um, spiritual people can't make money. So you'll soon be getting rid of that if that's an issue for you. 
because you know making as much money as I do allows me to travel as much as I have been able to. It's great to make money. Uh, I forgot what my point was. I had a point with that. We're talking about you know, selling the memberships and selling oh, putting your products on the back. Putting the products on the back yeah, that's the back page. Okay, very good. Now, what I've done is I've gotten everybody so far. Oh, it sounds like we he have has a kid in the background. Yeah, just press star six on your phone, and you can still hear us. So do you suppose everybody bought into the concept that your vibration is always getting matched? You know, I explained it really well. I gave a couple of household everyday examples. People really got it, right? Yes. Now, people that are kind of desperate in the audience thinking, oh, my God, that's me. What do you think they need to hear next? How to change it. How to change it. So on uh, on your notes, just put Superman, Superwoman outfit. Oh, my. Superman, Superwoman outfit. Everybody get an image of what that would be like? <laughs> yeah. So, so what do you think that means? You know, I'm gonna put I'm gonna go put my Superman outfit, I'm gonna go in the in the phone booth and then what am I gonna do? Ta da. I'm gonna do a ta da and what's the ta da for? We just mentioned it a minute ago. Show them how they can change it. Show them it how they can vibration. change it. Well, that's such a problem, isn't it? <laughs> So I'm going to go get changed. I'm going to put a Superman outfit. I'm going to jump out and say, I'm going to help you change that. So that makes me the what? The hero. Hero. Ah. Back down, the hero. Now, you know, some of these words might be a little bugaboo in your back or whatever or whatever. It's okay. Just take what you like today. I want to be a hero. Why? Because I'm what? I'm in business. Why? To make okay. money. So in order to make money, I need to give really great value to people. And I need to serve them really well, and I need to be their hero. I need them to like me. How does that sound to people? Does it sound okay or shallow, or is it a part of business that you never thought about? Or well, it makes, business. It makes perfect sense because if they like you, they're going to listen to you. If they don't like you, they're not going to listen to what you have to say, and you're very passionate about getting your message out. That's right. Then they yeah, don't learn. They leave the resistance. What else? <laughs> Okay. They don't like you. They're not going to buy it from you, most likely. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so here's what happens. Now that we've painted this gloomy picture about having, we're always sending out a negative vibration, I'm going to let people know that the words they use cause them to send a negative vibe. Write that down. You could even say, did you know the words you use cause you to send a negative vibe? And my little joke is, that's good news. It really is. It's good news. Oh, great. You're going to tell me what they are, right? So just put that in brackets. That's good news. I'm going to tell you what they are. However, there's bad news, too. I'd like you to write this down. However, there's bad news, too. The bad news is most people use these three words over 150 times times before noon. What do you guys think about that? No way. So if you're saying it, then what else, what are they doing it? <laughs> He just said no. <laughs> so, but they're saying that. They're thinking, well, that can't be true. Three words. I'm getting scared now. 150 times. So you see how I'm kind of building it up a little bit? Uh-huh. Now we're on the edge of our seat. Just I know. So know. are they. So I'm going to reveal <gasps> that word. <gasps> Write it down. I'm going to reveal what the three words are. Now, on my worksheets, there's three boxes at the top of the page. On a teleclass, I would say, so draw three boxes on the top of your page. Like I keep prolonging giving you the three words. Now, you know what? I'm even going to spell them for you just to make sure you got them. <laughs> First word is the word don't, D-O-N-T. The next word is the word not, N-O-T. And the last word is no, N-O. So who can tell me why I brought light to wanting to spell them? Reinforce them. Okay, it reinforces it. Good. 
And not could be K-N-O-T. Not could be K-N-O-T, and no could be K-N-O-W. So you have d people that process different languages, and um, or they might even spell it wrong. It's, it, it makes it cute. And I say, well, one of them is only two letters long. How could it screw up your life? Don't nod and know. <laughs> Now, what I do here, and in your notes, put refer back to opening paragraph. So let's go back to the opening paragraph. Remember law of attraction states, whatever you give your attention, energy, and focus to, you'll get more of it, whether negative or positive. Whenever you use the word don't, not, and no, you just gave attention to what you didn't want to give attention to. Uh. Looking at my clock, do you guys have about 10 more minutes? Yeah. Okay, if not, it'll be on recording. I'm just, this is really important, and I just want to make sure we complete this today. What was the last thing I just said? Whenever you use these words, you've just given attention to what you didn't want to give attention to. That's right. So I just brought up a new concept. Oh, my God, new concept. What, what do I need to do now? Give an example. Give examples. Example. What's in the example? A negative and a positive. Negative and positive, and the reason why I'm giving an example is to get what? Buy-in. Buy-in. Okay. So don't not know. So let me give you an example. I don't want you to think of the Statue of Liberty. Don't think of the Canadian flag. Well, I know that you know that I know that you did. And don't think of a pineapple. It's pretty cute so far, isn't it? And, and what are people in the audience doing as I'm making this list? I'm thinking of every single thing you say the thinking second you... of the pineapple... pineapple. Now the Statue of Liberty holding the pineapple. <laughs> of course. So yeah, I'm kind of making my point here, aren't I? When I say what I don't want, now, of course, I'm, I'm a repeater. I'll say, you notice how when I said what I didn't want, that you gave it attention, energy, and focus? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Search engines. Let's go to your search, in on your search engine on your computer and type in no football. <laughs> what shows up? Football, football, football. football. So how come I'm giving you different kinds of examples? Buy-in. Um, different trying to get buy-in, and the reason why I used a football example was just to wake the men up in case they were kind of having a little snoozy poos there. <laughs> no football. <laughs> Every time you use the word don't, not, and no, you just brought attention. Now, this is really important. So when you said no, you know, no Canadian flags and no statutory, that's not going to screw up your life. Mm -hmm. But what about when you're talking about, write this down, what about... There's my Canadian accent, isn't it? What about when I'm talking about my goals, my dreams, my business, my relationships? Then it really matters. So I should do what here, just to cement the point? An example. Give an example. Yeah. Okay. I hear, I hear business people write this. Don't hesitate to contact me. What did they just give attention to? Hesitation. Don't forget. What did I give attention to? Getting. Hey. Don't be disappointed. Well, it's like I wasn't until you brought it up. <laughs> so find as many examples. Now, of course, there's not only business people in the audience. There is who? She's a woman with a baby. There are others. others. Mothers, because mothers are thinking, oh, my God, he doesn't have kids. He couldn't possibly have kids and not use the word don't, not, and no. So the mother has this little chat going on. So what do we need to address? Mothers. Mothers. Okay, for all you mothers, and now what happens when I say that? Can are they all paying attention? Yes. Yeah, she's yeah, talking about me. For all you mothers, when you say don't play ball in the house, what do you give attention to? Don't get your clothes dirty. Don't spill your milk. Don't beat up your brother. Don't do drugs. Don't have sex. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> so I'm, am I really making my point here about when we use the word don't, we just gave it attention, and law of attraction will bring you more of it? Oh, yes. just wait. I'm going to go in my phone booth and do what? I'm with my yeah. superwoman. I'm, I'm going to come out with my Superman, superwoman outfit, because I'm going to say, so I'm going to teach you how to stop saying don't, not, and no. Do you want to know that? What do they say? Yay. Yay. Okay, write this down in big capital letters. So, what do I want? Ah, oh, what a relief. What do I want? Okay, new concept, quickly, what's next? 
Examples. Example. So what do I want? So remember earlier I said, uh, don't forget. So what do I want? Remember. 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 Don't play ball in the house. What do I want? Play outside. Play outside. Uh, I don't forget. Oh, I think I already did that one. I don't want this to hurt. What do I want? Pain free. Well, not feel, pain feel free. Good. I want feel this to feel good. Don't park here. Could say what? Park there. Park here. Park over there. <laughs> no exit. Could say what? Entrance Stay only. On the road. So here's my point. I'm going to wrap this whole piece up here. Every sentence in the whole wide world. How many sentences? Every, every, every sentence. sentence in the whole wide world that has the word no in it can be reframed and relanguaged with this cute, quick sentence. So here's what's important. I want you to write this down. We're starting to wind down. Or wind up. I can't tell. I think we're winding up, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to write this. When I go from what I don't want to what I do want, The words change. Now I'm going to get some buy-in here. How could I get buy-in here? Sample. I could ask for a, a sample or an example. Or say, any, anybody notice that? When I went from what I didn't want to what I do want, the words change? Yes, buy-in? Yes. 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 You're installing that. Yes, I'm installing that it, too. there was a change. When the words change, here's the last sentence, the vibration changes. So remember I said, I don't want to be late. What do you want? I want to be early. I don't want to be disappointed. What do you want? I want to be pleased. I don't want this to hurt. What do you want? I want to feel good. So you notice when you go from what you don't want to what you do want, the words change. And when the words change, the vibration changes. Here's the most important sentence for right now. How many vibrations can I have at any time? One. 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 Write that down. I can only have one, big capital letters, double underline, Happy faces decided. I can only have one vibration at a time. So here's your homework between now and the rest of your life. Is to, every time you hear yourself use the word don't, not, and no, in that very moment, you need to have a strategy to help you remember to say the word don't, not, and no. What's an example of a strategy to help you remember to say don't, not, and no? Ask, so what do I want? By asking it. Some people will put it on a little recipe card, right? Or on your screensaver. Or your new password is so what do I want. Or your name your next pet, so what do I want. Or you put it on your bathroom mirror. See, these are different strategies. But would it be okay if your unconscious mind brought it to your attention every time you said what you didn't want? Would that be okay if you had a little reminder from that inner voice? Great. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no, everybody? Yes. 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 Okay, so I want you to repeat after me. Oh, by the way, you know what I, the technique I just did? It's called command a response. So let's go to page one where we're writing down the techniques, and it's called command a response. Did you hear me command a response? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Ooh, he's getting nasty now. <laughs> Better pay attention. I don't want to piss him off. <laughs> okay, so, so that's what your homework is. To eliminate the words don't, not, and no, and over the next couple of days or earlier, you're going to catch yourself saying don't, not, and no, and in that very moment you have the opportunity to say, here's what I do want. So you tell me, when you go from what you don't want to what you do want, what changes? Vibration. vibration. Vibration changes, and when you change the vibration, what's the new vibration that you're sending? Positive. positive. New positive one. And how does your law of attraction remember what yesterday's vibration was? Doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because law of attraction is only checking when? Now. Right, right now. Right now. Right now. So I want you to draw a circle and put a, a word inside the circle. And the word is reset. What did you just draw? Circle. Circle and a circle inside. Reset button. Did you draw yeah. two circles, Stephanie? Yeah. Oh, really? Uh-oh. <laughs> draw a circle 
and inside the circle, write the word reset. Uh-huh. So now what did you just draw? A reset button. A reset button. Okay. Very good. Is there an area in most people's life that they'd like to reset? <laughs> right now and right now. <laughs> yeah, right now and right now and right now. So what you're learning how to do and what you're going to learn in this program and what you're going to learn in the seminar or this teleclass, whatever it is, you're going to learn how to reset your vibrations. And you learned one way to reset your vibration today. What's that technique? So what do I want? So what do I want? I promise you, you will, you will receive significant results just by changing the words you're using because the words you're using cause you to send a vibration. By the way, there's a reason why it's called deliberate attraction because it means you need to be doing something what? Deliberately. Deliberately. That's why it's called deliberate attraction. If you want to attract something deliberately, you better be offering the vibration of it deliberately, or at least offering the vibration. So are you doing anything to be a deliberate attractor? Yes. Yes. What did you learn today that will 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 give you the title of being a deliberate attractor? You can say, so what do I want? Say, so what do I want? Because I promise you, over the next couple of days or earlier, you're going to catch yourself saying don't, not, and no. We're going to have Rebecca come close the call, and then we're going to stay on the line to get a little bit of feedback for those of you that have a few minutes to hang around and just tell me what you like. So we'll hear from Rebecca. Well, thank you, Michael. And listeners, would you like to learn how to teach over the phone the way Michael has been teaching? Then I invite you to visit Teleclass International at www.teleclassinternational.com and discover the teleleader training program that Michael helped develop using these accelerated learning techniques and more.